Hey guys, what it do? It's your boy Supreme Uchiha, the god man. I just read Lucas on man, and that chapter was fire, boy. So this is soap all over my goddamn, you know what I'm saying? I have soap all over me. But anyway, I was watching, um, reading the new Lucas on man. This shit fire as fuck, bro. This shit amazing. This chapter was one of my favorite chapters in a long ass time. Like, I totally enjoyed that shit. I was invested in every goddamn character in this shit, including Sino. Like, I was really invested. Like, I'm really getting to know these dudes. But, the, you know, what the interesting thing about this episode is it focuses on the butterfly effect, right? So, it's the little details, the little things that happened that caused everybody to end up in the current situation that they at. Uh, Jake in jail. Uh, Sam was so not happy doing million dollar businesses and being used by somebody that used to he used to be the boss of you know what i'm saying until he was like yo i'm kind of tired of you you know what i'm saying and him ending up with goo and 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 ending up on his own and him finding and waiting for jake to come out of jail we don't know what's gonna happen i don't know if they're gonna reunite and be one again like they used to be back then and interestingly you see how a lot of these characters have met prior they do say a lot of successful people know each other or have met or been around similar circles so um it's interesting because that's actually genuinely how they portray this it's like all of these alchemists all of these goddamn people that that have the power to really like change shit and cause havoc and cause you know what i'm saying positively or negatively these guys are built different so they got the sauce and the power and the energy to really fuck shit up or fix shit up you know what i'm saying and it's like the little details is what created the chaos that we have in the current timeline in the current present moment of the big four crews and all of that shit man it's crazy gun and goo goaded absolutely goaded love them in this chapter phenomenal the little cameo made everything pop off boy when that shit ended i was like oh my god oh my god i've been excited like this a long time man. i'm so excited i'm so goddamn excited this shit was fire oh god so um you know what i'm saying well, let's talk about it so obviously the chapter begins and you have jake and 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 samuel so you know what i'm saying they're basically having a conversation and it's like about like you know what i'm saying you know it's well okay i'm gonna start early even before that so you got uh jerry picks up the stray god dog johan you know what i'm saying he picks him up from the street and all the you know and you have samuel and you see here that he's very very intellectual he's very smart but he's he's very cunning he's also very vicious you know what i'm saying and you kind of see why he likes jake and why he wants to work with jake because jake offers that counterbalance so nobody is going to leave because jake is so nice and nobody's going to leave that thinks jake is so nice is going to leave because they're afraid of samuel so you really hook everybody into the team that way so anyway jerry gets his man gets um finds god dog johan and he brings him into the crew etc and then you know it's interesting because you know samuel is mad and rightfully so he's like nah we can't have that shit bro we broke we don't have enough money we barely we barely making ends meet we can't afford to have more people in the group because we got to feed these motherfuckers we got to shelter these motherfuckers we got to do a lot for these motherfuckers and we just don't have the facility currently to house especially a one pass dude that's living alone like this we do not have the facility now interestingly then this is uh juxtaposed by by the way um that later though like they didn't realize that this guy is gonna be god dog they didn't realize that this guy is gonna end up being a fucking elite dude like this you know what i'm saying so it's like what if we took him in at that moment what if we did this interestingly reading the bts uh comic yesterday it's it's eerily similar what's happening here and it's it's done in such a freaking spectacular way spectacular fashion and it really had me thinking i don't think i'd even be thinking about it in in, in this sense if i hadn't read that bts comic save me so shout out to bts comic by by by, by uh you know what's it what's it called the goddamn big hit yeah shout out shout out to them for that comment because it really opened my mind introspectively speaking when it comes to this chapter of lucas i don't know how but it just aligned that i read it yesterday and this came out today amazing so um you know so i was reading the chapter and then you know someone pulls up to to jerry and then he's like yo we can't hide this guy out here and you know 
Jerry's like, well, it's not up to you. Like, Jake decides who joins outside of the group. You know what I'm saying? He's like, ye motherfuckers. He's like, ye motherfuckers. He grabs him by the cheeks. Like, ye motherfuckers. You still don't call me sir. You still do not call me sir after all of this time. He's like, well, there's only one big boss. There's only one sir to me. And that's Jake. Nobody else. Oh, God. Oh, God. You know, because Jerry about that shit. So I, I really want to know more about their relationship as well. I know that Jake looks out for him, makes sure that he's going to school and wants him to be good. Um, but now that Jake is, is on a bad path, I, I don't know. Like, will he try to protect Jerry at all costs? Will that be the catalyst that prevents him from going? Or will they all turn on, on Goo and Gun? I have no idea. That's the greatness about these chapters right here. We really do not know what might happen uh, in regards to these characters. I think Daniel's arc is a bit more predictable in comparison to a lot of these guys. We don't know if God Dog and, and Zack are going to be back to friends. We don't know if Zack is ever going to be strong enough to actually defeat him because I think that's what go it's going to take. So maybe that's what we're building up to a climax of that because there's that massive talent gap uh you know what i'm saying and it's, it's 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 interesting to see so um you know so this chapter was it was just crazy so obviously uh god dog is begging because he's like oh i ran away from home blah 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 and then someone's like bro why would we take some cry baby ass bum little kid like you like fuck out of here but we don't want time for this get out of here now little kid is the same age as jerry but jerry looks like a fucking tree adults together man you know what i'm saying so Sam was like, nah, and then he tells him about his mama, you know, in, in he's pleading, he's like, oh, I need to take care of my mom, and Samuel, that reminds him of himself, one of the reasons, it, it seems like that he's doing what he does, even though his mama abused him, and did all this shit to him, he understands, like, seeing your mom in that condition ain't great, so he lets him in, because it's like, fuck it, my own mom is going through a struggle as well, I'm trying to blow up like this, and make this money, and go, go to bigger, better things, for that, you know, maybe for that same reason, we're not 100% sure if that's his motivation, but with him letting God Dog in because of that seems to be that motivation, so he's like, you know what, you can stay type shit, but then I think Sinu says you can't type shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. I, I, I don't quite I, I don't quite remember because I know that God Dog ends up not staying. He ends up leaving and finding God Dog. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not too sure because he was like, oh, he, he's willing to clean, cook, all of that shit. So someone was like, oh, you can stay. Uh, but I think Sinu was like, oh, unfortunately, you can't because like we just can't afford it. And it'd be great to have you, but we just can't do it. And actually, Sinu, interestingly, was complaining about Samuel. He's like, this guy's too vicious. But his right-hand man is like, no, he's the perfect person that we need. We need somebody like that because we can't have everybody being so nice, et cetera, et cetera. He, he, keeps, he makes sure people stay in line. You know what I'm saying? He keeps people in line. And... Both of them show favoritism. It's kind of like Gun and Goo, interestingly. Uh, one prefers one style of, of, excuse me, of leadership and the other prefers the other. So Sinu obviously prefers Jake and he prefers Jake to be the next leader. Um, so then Jake and, and Samuel are by the waters having a conversation about this, you know. And Samuel is like, yo, I, you know me. I want to do bigger and better things. Like, you know what I'm saying? At some point, one of us is going to have to be leader. Who obviously, the two obvious candidates, you know, and... Jake is like not really interested, but neither is Samuel. Samuel's like, I'm not interested in in, in big deal like this because I want to do something bigger. But I want you to come with me because I feel like me and you work good together. So you can see the friendship is real. You can see that they really fuck with each other. So I think this is where Gun comes through and forces them to fight and forces them to split. You know what I'm saying? And creates the four major crews and rejects uh, uh, Samuel. And I think that's probably what causes Samuel to fight maybe. So they're having this conversation and they're talking and... You know, Jake is like, look, I don't want to be a gangster because essentially Samuel wants to start a gangster corporation, a big one. And he's like, I don't want to be a gangster, bro. Like my dad was a gangster, but he didn't take care of his family. And I, I can never respect that. The only reason I joined Big Deal is because Sinu, Sinu takes care of his people. You know what I'm saying? And I, unless, you know, and, and because of that difference, that's why I'm, I'm a part of Big Deal. Otherwise, I wouldn't have joined either. I don't fuck with gangsters. And then he tells him who his dad is. And Samuel's like, oh, holy gobsmack. That's, we brothers. But I don't think Samuel tells Jake this. He's, he just knows this. He notes it. And he's like, fuck, this is my brother. So it's, they're twins. They must be twins then, right? Because they, they're the same age and everything, right? They look similar, all of that shit. I love this. I love this outcome. I think a lot of us guess this from the past previous few, few chapters because of just the likeliness and all of that stuff both of the dad is dead uh etc etc i know he looks like tom and stuff and we we're talking about how he looks like tom but the, you know the, obviously uh the, the, the parent the father is dead so interesting it was like oh damn so it kind of validates what jake was talking about that your, that his dad was not all there you know what i'm saying he wasn't the greatest and on top of that i think this might also create a jealousy 
for Samuel because Jake had the dad. You know what I'm saying? Well, Samuel never had the dad. You know what I'm saying? Even though Jake's dad neglected him, but he was still about every now and then. He lived with them. That was his family home type shit. Uh, while Samuel's mom was just a side piece to him. You know what I'm saying? So interesting here. This is very interesting to, to understand the mindsets of these two individuals and what really, you know, creates who we see today. You know, I feel like Samuel cooled himself down, but he still has that viciousness, but he forced it, forced it down. But now he's ready to release it. So it makes sense why he's been counting down Jake coming out of prison. Maybe he decided, you know what, I, I need to fake shit with my brother. Maybe I need to tell him. I don't know. I don't know if he wants to fight him. I don't know what he wants to do. So it's going to be super interesting because obviously he got rejected uh, by 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 gun eventually. Right. Jay got it, it, it rejected by gun eventually. So maybe maybe he's going to be like, look, who accepted me? Maybe he'll accept you as well. Come work with us. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's going to fight him. I don't know. But I, I, I'm almost positive they're going to try to team up, hold hands and, and go against gun and goo. They might be the ones to do it. Um, and it's interesting because gun and goo are bad guys. But are they bad guys? Like, you know, what I'm saying like they they're vicious and mean, but they you know, they, they almost like it makes sense why they are that way. I don't know. It's just so interesting. It's hard for me to like, who do I want to win in out of this? I love Jake. I, I love Samuel. I, I love Goo. I love God. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like what, what what's going to happen? It's so amazing how the author is creating this story right now. And what, see, this is the type of story that we wanted. This type of acts that we wanted. None of that superpower bullshit. None of that blacking out and being invincible shit. This is the type of story that we like when the characters are the centerpiece, not fighting, not all of that other shit. All of shit is amazing when it happens and when it's limited. You know what I'm saying? But if it's happening every chapter, it takes the momentum away from the story, the narrative, the, the character growth, the character portrayal. That's what we care about. These this intricate storytelling, the way he's intertwining all of these things that's happening is happening and putting them together to say, this is why he's here. This is how he's here. This is how he's there. Amazing. We even had Ali Wong pull up and and, 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 and you can see him and Heather, they've been friends. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the crazy thing. They've been friends, right? They were best friends for a long time before they met Eli and them. And you see Ali was always wanted that, always wanted something like this. And eventually, obviously, he did get that with Eli and them. And then he ended up killing his best friend and i think you know that's what broke him that's what set him aflame and that's why he decided to kill himself because he felt like you know i feel like he almost wanted to feel pain because of what he did to heather he killed heather essentially so he ends up he feeling like the only way i can repay for that is by killing myself like i need to end myself which is never the right answer but i can understand it like you know what i'm saying no to suicide and shit but at the same time story wise narrative wise it was phenomenal execution amazing and uh, that was the best part of that whole eli arc again the eli arc just dragged on for a bit too long and it became a bit too chaotic and involved a bit too many characters without fully fleshing every detail of all of them. Well, I feel like Jake's one here is so fleshed that we already knew Jake beforehand. We already knew, when, and at this moment, we already knew uh, Ali. And at this moment, we already we already know God Dog. At this moment, we already, Samuel is the only person that we're really learning, learning about. Jake as well, we're learning more about them, but we knew these characters before we got here. So now we're getting deeper into the layers. We have a, uh, some kind of understanding of these characters already Sorry, I just got a phone call there. Uh, from the homie but yeah so you know what i'm saying it's really really the chapter was amazing this is probably the longest review i've done for for uh uh, uh lucasm but it's just bro there's just so much detail in this chapter just so much there's probably a lot that i'm missing there's probably a lot that i haven't talked about like this chapter was amazing it is it, a masterpiece it is you know an example of how good this webtoon used to be and can be if it focuses on narratives like these you know what i'm saying and even the, the, the fact that you know they reject god god dog and you know and i think samuel or jake i don't know who's thinking but they're like I wonder where we would be if we all stayed together, if we all became a group, a power group and ran this place. You know what I'm saying? Uh, would Ali be dead? You know what I'm saying? Would Ali be dead? Because these guys liked Ali, regardless of how it seems. God dog, God dog pulled up to his funeral. Like, they fucked with this guy. Like, they, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I know not all of them knew him that well, but they're like, what if we accepted him? Because by the time they heard about him at that stage, it was too late. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're like, what if we accepted him? Maybe he wouldn't have died. What if uh, me, I stayed here with Jake, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, Jake joined me. And if we ruled big deal together, you know what I'm saying? Like, Jake wouldn't go to jail. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Samuel wouldn't end up in, being forced in this corner, in this hole where he's at at the moment. And 
at the same time, you'll have people, somebody like God, God dog might have already been able to help his mother. They, they would have all been able to help each other because essentially this is a story, an arc of broken people, people that are hurt and have been hurt and have been forced in situations to do things, to grow up extremely rapidly. Samuel's mother essentially wasn't a mother. She was just beating the boy and abusing the boy and neglecting the boy all type of shit so he had to grow up extremely fast jake's father was abusing the mother and him which obviously created a, a destructive environment and then when he passed away didn't help now you know probably money struggles all type of shit so now he he had to grow up really fast you know what i'm saying we're not sure about jerry to be honest jerry could be rich out for all we know i don't know what the fuck jerry just different jerry jerry just different he's kind of one of those characters i don't mind being mysterious about uh because i feel like eventually we're gonna get a tale of him and jake and and how they met and why he he adores jake so much because now we already know brad and the other guy why they followed jake you know what i'm saying or why they followed jake so it's interesting to see just all of these pieces come together it's it's phenomenal man it's like a jigsaw just finishing pieces man phenomenal uh but yeah man that, that's my thoughts about the chapter man samuel so i really like this dude uh because you can tell that he cares but in a different way because even with alex alexander you know what i'm saying alexander was treating him like shit but at the same time he he still he never like started beating him up. He didn't like knock. You know what I'm saying? He felt like I, I wanted to beat your ass for some time, but at the same time, you helped me get some money. So I, I, you know what I'm saying? He's appreciative. He's he's unique in that way, and he he likes Jake for real, for real. Like he fucks with Jake, even though they both have such differing ideologies. You know what I'm saying? And it's super interesting, bro. It's super interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm I cannot wait for the next few chapters. I cannot wait. It's gonna be crazy. It's been your boys, the premature to God. Hey, I love y'all. I'm out. Oh, subscribe, gang shit. I got friends now.